All right, welcome to optimization problems. We're going to be doing three problems in this video, and I'm going to explain how to do them and what the whole point of this is. So first, I'll read the problem. A farmer has 2,400 feet of fencing and wants to fence off a rectangular field that borders a straight river. So if I draw this picture, we have some field there, and we want to build a nice fence around a field, but we only have 2,400 square feet of this fence, so maybe we have 1,200, 600, and 600, or we might have another combination. Let's say we have 1,500, and that means that we have 900 left over, so we do 450 and 450. And we want to find which dimensions we can make the largest field with. So we want to maximize the area of the field while using only 2,400 feet in our perimeter. So how do we do this? Well, like always, same with related rates, we need to use two functions. So we have our area, which we know is going to be our width times our height, so we're going to call this x times y. In fact, what we'll do is I will label this on the diagram. Our sides are going to be x and our top is going to be y. So our area is going to be x times y. Our perimeter is going to be 2x plus y and it's 2x plus 1y because it's up against a river, so we don't need that extra line of fence. And this is going to equal 2400. So, what we want to do is we want to have area in one function because we're trying to maximize area. So, we'll say that y is equal to 2400 minus 2x. Again, I just took the perimeter formula and solved it for y. And now for area, we're going to substitute y in. So we're going to have x times 2400 minus 2x. So this is now going to equal 2400x minus 2x squared. So whatever we're maximizing, we want that to be the formula that we substitute things into. And we want it to be in one variable. So now we can take the derivative. So area prime is now going to be 2400 minus 4x and now let's solve for x so we're going to have that x is going to be equal to 600 so f prime of 600 is equal to 0 now this is something you should remember from curve sketching that this is a critical point and what do we know about critical points? They are either maximums or minimums. So what we wanted to do is we want to maximize the area of the field. So we need to check to see, hey, is this actually a maximum? And the answer is, well, it should be. But there is another theorem that you learned. And that, okay, let's take a look. Our x values can only range from 0 to 1200. So we also need to check f prime of 0 and f prime of 1200. Actually, we need to check out values that aren't in the prime. We just need to evaluate the function. And we need to make sure that 600 is actually the maximum. So if we pick 1200 for x, our y is going to have to be 0. So for both of these other ones, we're going to have 0. When x is 600, our y is going to be 1200. In fact, what we should do right away is we should solve for y. So if x is equal to 600, then 2400 is equal to, what do we have here? 2400 minus 2x is equal to y. So we have y is equal to 1200. So f of 600 is going to be 600 times 1200, which I believe is along the lines of 720,000. So 
Yes, we have confirmed that this is a maximum. So the dimensions of our perimeter here should be 600 by 1200. Of course, by another 600 on the side. So that will maximize our area. So we have um, x is equal to 600, y is equal to 1200. So this is one type of problem you can do. Another one that's more common is a can optimization problem, where we say the cylindrical can is to hold one liter of oil. So one liter is equal to 1,000 centimeters cubed. So we want to find the dimensions that will minimize the cost of the metal to manufacture the can. So in other words, our goal is to minimize the surface area of the can while holding a constant one liter of volume. So we know a couple things here. Our surface area, which I'll call SA, is going to be the bottom of the can, which is pi r squared times 2, because we have a top and a bottom. And the circular part between the cans is going to be 2 pi r times height. And of course, these are formulas you'll find for your cans. Uh, it should be in the back of the textbook if you don't know how to find the area surface area or volume of some of these shapes. Uh, there's a nice formula list, and if not, you should be able to find it online pretty easily. So we have this for our surface area, and our volume formula is going to be pi r squared times h. So we want to maximize surface area, so we either want to eliminate radius or height. Well, radius looks a little bit more complicated to eliminate because we're dealing with a squared in our formula. So let's solve for height. And of course, I should write down that this volume has to equal 1,000. So we're going to have h is equal to 1,000 over pi r squared. I know this looks a little bit confusing, but don't worry. This isn't going to be too bad. Now we'll substitute our h in our surface area. So 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r times 1,000 over pi r squared. So we can rewrite this as 2 pi r squared plus 2,000 over r when we do some canceling. So now what we want to do is we want to take the derivative of this because we're going to be minimizing it. So we want to find that some value is a local minimum. So take the derivative of SA prime. So this will be 4 pi r. And this will then be minus 2,000 over r squared. So now we should probably find a nice common denominator and put them all together. So when we do that, we'll get 4 pi r cubed minus 500, all divided by r squared. So I just picked a common denominator, and then I simplified it, and of course I factored out the 4. So now what we have is we need to find when sa prime is equal to 0. So how do we find it equal to zero? Well, we want pi r cubed minus 500 to equal zero. So this is when pi r cubed is going to equal 500. So when we solve for r here, we're going to get r is equal to 500 over pi, and we need to take the cubed root of this. So it is a little bit messy. However, what you do here is you then check this value and the extreme values. So of course you probably pick r is equal to 1 and r is equal to, well really, r is equal to 0. And then you would pick another value, which would be r is equal to 100 divided by pi would be probably the greatest value you could use. Check those, and you will see 
that this value of r here, the cubed root of 500 over pi, is going to have the smallest value, which means that you have thus minimized your surface area. So if you had to pay for your metal, then having a radius of this size in centimeters, of course, is going to be the best possible size you can use to save the most amount of money when creating cans that hold exactly one liter. So that is your second type of optimization problem, given a shape or a circle or a cylinder or something finding a nice radius. So that way the volume is constant, but you have a smaller surface area. One more problem that we'll do in this video is going to be a parabola question. So we need to find a point on a parabola that is closest to some other point. So what you want to do here is essentially when we say it's closest to the point, what we're doing is we're minimizing the distance between the curve and some other point. So we have this distance function, which is kind of like Pythagoras, where we're going to take our x value and we'll subtract this x value here plus our y value minus uh, this value here. Of course we need to square them. So we kind of have this uh, Pythagoras triangle result. This in fact would be if we take this distance to be x minus 1 and this distance to be y minus 4, we're finding this distance right here, which of course would be the closest if we have 1, 4, and we have our curve y equals x squared, or sorry, that would be y is equal to 2x. What we're finding is the shortest distance between the two points. We don't know what the point is, so that we have this function now. And... What we should do is we should take uh, this formula and solve for, say, y. So we're going to have that. So let's solve for x. x is going to be y squared over 2. Okay, so now in this distance formula, let's replace all x's with y squared over 2. So we have the square root of y squared over 2 minus 1 all squared plus y minus 4 squared. So here's the fun part, which I'm sure you probably don't find too much fun. We now need to minimize the distance, so we need to take its derivative, and I will speed through this really quick. We'll end up with y cubed minus 8 over the square root of y to the fourth minus 32y plus 68. Honestly, if you're doing a homework problem, I would just plug this into Wolfram Alpha, find the derivative, and then go from there. So, of course, we want to find where this distance prime is equal to zero. So, we have y cubed minus 8 is equal to zero, when y cubed is equal to 8, which means that y is going to equal 2. Okay, and if y is equal to 2, then we have 4 is equal to 2 times x, so we have x is equal to 2. So we can claim that 2, 2 is going to be the closest point on the parabola to the point 1, 4. And of course what you should do is you should check uh, 0, 0, and you should probably check um, the value See, x is going to be 1, and then if we get 1, we'll have the square root of 2. You need to check uh, quite a few points, but if you've done everything right, there's a very good chance that this uh, should be the correct answer. So those were three optimization problems. Next video, we're going to tackle two more. One I will do for you, and then another one you can try by yourself, and then we'll go through. So hopefully this wasn't too bad. If you have any questions, write them in the comments, and I will get to them as quickly as possible.